Now we'll prove Mantle's theorem. Recall that a triangle is a clique of size 3. Mantle's theorem says that a graph on any vertices without triangles can only have at most floor of n square over 4 edges. We will prove this theorem again by induction on n, the number of vertices in our graph. And we will consider two base cases, n equals 1 and n equals 2. When n equals 1, graph can contain only zero edges, because there is only one vertex. And actually, the floor of n squared over 4 in this case is the floor of 1 fourth is 0, 2. When n equals 2, then a graph on two vertices can contain at most one edge. And the floor of n squared over 4 is exactly 1. So both base cases hold. An induction assumption, induction hypothesis will be that the statement of theorem holds for all graphs on at most k minus 2 vertices. And the induction step would be to show that the statement also holds for all graphs on at most k vertices. Note that the step of the induction in this case is of size 2, and this is exactly why we consider two base cases. We proved it for graphs of size 1, we proved it for graphs of size 2, and then induction step of size 2 will carry on the statement for all integers. Now we'll prove induction step. Let us pick two connected vertices, u and v. We want to say that the sum of the degree of u and degree of v is at most n. Indeed, assume it's greater than n. Then, by the pigeonhole principle, there exists some vertex x such that both u and v are connected to x, which forms a triangle. But we know that our graph doesn't contain any triangles. So the degree of u plus the degree of v must be at most n. Now, let's remove u and v from our graph and let's denote the remaining graph by h. H now has only k minus 2 vertices. So we can apply induction hypothesis to the graph H. So by the induction hypothesis, the number of edges in the graph H is at most the floor of n minus 2 squared over 4. Let's now count the number of edges in G. It has all edges from H and also edges going from the vertices u and v. We know that sum of their degrees is at most n, but these two degrees count the edge between u and v twice. So the actual number of edges that u and v have is at most n minus 1. So the number of edges in g is upper bounded by the number of edges in h plus n minus 1. Now we just simplify the expression n minus 2 squared. We know it's n squared minus 4n plus 4. And when you divide minus 4n plus 4 by 4, we get the following expression. Floor of n squared over 4 minus n minus 1 plus n minus 1, which equals floor of n squared over 4, exactly what we wanted to prove. There is a generalization of Mantle's theorem, which is called Turin's theorem. Mantle's theorem says that if a graph doesn't contain cliques of size 3, then there are a few edges. Turin's theorem says that if a graph doesn't contain cliques of size r plus 1, then there are somewhat few edges. For example, if you take r to be 2 in Turin's theorem, you will get exactly the statement of Mantle's theorem. And in fact, both theorems are tied, which means that there are graphs which have exactly this number of edges. For Mantle's theorem, this would be a complete bipartite graph, where the left part has n over 2 vertices, the right part has n over 2 vertices, and the graph has all edges between these two parts. This would be n squared over 4 edges, exactly the number from, the, uh, from Mantle's theorem. For Turan's theorem, there is a more general tight example, which is called a Turan graph. You just 
uh, partition all the vertices of the graph more or less evenly in R parts and connect all pairs of vertices from different parts.